Good day everyone, welcome back to my virtual classroom. For those that are new to my class, please don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell for your attendance today. And of course, so that you will be notified for the next episode of Math's EC series be released. Now for our episode today, it will be about basic arithmetic. And this is one of the requests of our subscriber that I'm so glad and happy to do it for all of you. Now this might be one of the many basic arithmetic episodes that I'll be releasing as there are a lot of techniques that you can actually learn for multiplication and division that will make your calculation faster. Now in this episode as well, I will be introducing to you one multiplication technique and one division technique that might help you as well. So before we head to our whiteboard, as teacher Maria would always say, live your life to the fullest, learn something new every day, and love one another as how our God loves us. All right, so let's go to the whiteboard and learn some basic arithmetic technique. In arithmetic, we have four different operations. We have addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Before we proceed with the different examples, first let's unlock the key terms here. In addition, x and y are called addends, and the result is called sum. In subtraction, x here is called the minuend, and y is the subtrahend, and the result is called the difference. In multiplication, both are called factors, or your x could be called a multiplicand, and y will be your multiplier. The result is called the product. In division, x is what you call dividend, y is your divisor, and the result is what we call quotient. In addition, the rules will be followed. If you have the same sign, you add the numbers and copy the sign. For example, 8 plus 5 is 13. Since both are positive, therefore our answer will be positive 13. Another example, negative 9 plus negative 6. You add the following since they have the same sign, that will be 15. And since both are negative, so our answer would be negative 15. If you have different signs, what you need to do is subtract the number and copy the sign of the bigger value. For example, negative 9 plus 4, we subtract 4 from 9, we have 5. And since 9 is a bigger value, then the answer will be negative 5. Another example, negative 8 plus 17. So since this is different signs, we subtract 8 from 17, that will give us a 9. And since 17 is a bigger value, therefore our answer will be positive 9. Now in subtraction, what we need to do is we proceed to addition or change the operation to addition from subtraction and change the subtrahend to its opposite sign. So for example, 8 minus 6 would be 8, proceed to addition, and change the sign of 6 to negative. That means 8 plus negative 6 would be 2, and since 8 is a bigger value, then our answer would be positive 2. That means we have to proceed to addition, and all the rules in addition would apply. Another example, 7 minus negative 6. Proceed to addition, change the sign, so 7 plus 6 would be 13. Another example, negative 9 minus negative 7. So we have negative 9, proceed to addition, change the sign of your subtrahend, so negative 9 plus 7 would be, since it's opposite sign, we will subtract, that would be 2, and since 9 is a bigger value, then our answer will be negative 2. And the last example, we have negative 9 minus 2. So again, negative 9, proceed to addition, change the sign of the se second number or your subtrahend. So negative 9 plus negative 2, the same sign, therefore we add and copy the sign, which is negative. So the sum will be negative 11. Now in multiplication, the rule would follow. Positive times a positive will be positive, while negative times a negative will be positive. Which means that if they have the same sign, the product will be positive. 
but if they have different signs, the product will be negative. So for example, 7 times 3 will be 21, and since both are positive, then our answer or our product will be positive 21. Negative 5 times negative 3, since both are negatives, therefore our product will be positive 15. Another example, we have negative 8 times 2, and since they have different signs, therefore the answer will be a negative number, which is negative 16. And the last example, we have 4 times negative 6. So since this is different signs, 4 times 6 is 24, therefore this will be a negative 24 because of the different signs. Now if we have a two-digit being multiplied, you can use your lattice method of multiplying two or three or four digits, but I will show you now a different technique that you would possibly uh, get it easier than the lattice method. So if we have two digits, the first step of this method is to multiply the tens place value, four and one, which is four, the ones place value, which is three and seven, that will give us 21. And then we multiply the inner value, 3 and 1, which is 3. And the outer value, which is 4 and 7, that's 28. And then we add the numbers 28 and 3. 28 plus 3 will be 31. We place that in the middle of 0, 4, and 21. Then we add the numbers. So that will be 1, 3, 7, 0. Therefore, 43 times 17 is 731. Another example, you have 27 times 75. So the first step again is multiply the tens place, which is 14. Multiply the ones place, which is 35. Multiply the numbers inner, 7 times 7, which is 49. 2 times 5, which is 10. And then we add the numbers, which will give us 59. Then the next step is to add the numbers. That will be 5. 9 plus 3 is 12. So we carry or bring 1 up with the hundreds place. And then you have 4 plus 1 plus 5, which is 10. And then carry 1. And then 1 plus 1 is 2. Therefore, 27 times 75 is 2,025. Now it's your turn. So what we need to do, tens place, multiply, that is zero to three times three, which is nine. And then you have to multiply the innermost that's 3, outermost, that's 6, then we add, which will give you 9, and then we add the numbers 9, 2. Therefore, 23 times 13 will be 299. The other example, 6 times 3, we have 18, 2 times 1, we have 2, and then we multiply the inner number, which is 2 times 3, that will give us 6. 6 times 1 is again 6. We add the number, that will be 12. And add the numbers again, 18. Uh, we have 1, 8, 0, 2, and 1, 2. So that's 2, 2, 9, 1. Therefore, 62 times 31 is 1,922. Now for division, we have devices 5 and 9 that I will introduce today. So 8 divided by 5, the easier way to do this is just simply multiplying your number by 2, your dividend by 2. That is the, uh, the reason behind it. It's because if we multiply both number by 2, we would actually get 16 over 10. Now according to the rule of numbers which are divisible by 10 or multiples of 10, all we need to do is count the number of zeros and that will be the place value of your numerator or your dividend. So for this case, 
there is only one zero for 10, so therefore the place value or the decimal will be moved to the tens place, that is 1.6. Or the number of zeros will be the number of decimal place value that you have to move. Another example, you have 21 over 5. So again, all you need to do is multiply 21 by 2. So we have 42. Therefore, 21 divided by 5 is 4.2. And 8 divided by 5 is 1.6. Now, if you have a divisor of 9, all you have to do, so this is a technique, you add the numbers or the dividend or the numerator together. 1 plus 2 is 3. If the number is less than 9, your answer would be retain the first digit or the tens place digit, that's 1. And then the sum, which is 3, will be the decimal value. So it will be 1.3 repeating. So 12 divided by 9 is 1.3. Another example, you have 18 divided by 9. When we add 1 plus 8, this would actually give us 9. So if the number is 9, exactly 9, what we need to do is, for our first digit, which is 1, we, all we need is to add 1 on it. So that will be 2. If the sum is exactly 9, we don't have any decimal value. Therefore, 18 divided by 9 is 2. Another example, we have 4 and 7. So we add 4 and 7 together. 4 plus 7 is 11. And we will not stop until we have a 1's digit only, or a 1, a 1 value. So we will add 1 plus 1 again. That will give us a 2. Now since 4 plus 7 is 11, which is more than 9, we will add 1 to our first digit. So that will be 5. And since 11 or 1 plus 1 is equal to 2, therefore, our decimal will be 2. Therefore, 47 divided by 9 will be 5.2, repeating. Now, it's your turn. So again, if it is 9 divided by 5 or the divisor is 5, all you have to do is multiply 9 by 2. So 9 times 2 is 18 and then we place the decimal value in between. If you have 41 divided by 5, 41 times 2 will be, times 2 will be 82 and then place the decimal value in between. So 41 divided by 5 is 8.2. So if your divisor is 9, all you need to do is add 6 plus 2 is 8. And since that is a number less than 9, therefore retain the first digit, 2. And then the sum will be our repeating decimal. So it will be 26 divided by 9 is 2.8 repeating. And the last example, 87. So we add 8 and 7. 8 plus 7 is 15. And since it's still a two-digit, we will add it again, 15 or 1 plus 5 is a 6. So then we stop. And since 8 plus 7 is more than 9, which is 15, we will add one, one value to 8. That will give us a 9 point and then the sum of 6. So therefore, 87 divided by 9 is 9.6 repeating. 